The following program is a public access production. Comcast is required to provide time on this channel and make it available pursuant to franchise agreements with the communities we serve. Comcast is not affiliated with the following program or the producers of public access programming and is not responsible for the content. The following program does not reflect the opinions of Comcast or its affiliates. begin the program I'd just like to give you a little recap as to how this observance this holiday got its existence it started in 1938 when Congress honored World War one veterans by the designation of this date as armistice day it continued in that format for upwards of 20 years until 1954 when it was retitled Veterans Day to honor all veterans. After that event in 1968, Congress changed the observation of this holiday to a Monday to coincide with other national holidays. That lasted a brief time. In 1975, President Ford authorized the observance of Veterans Day to fall on November 11th each day, taking it from a Monday observation. And 40 years later, we're still providing that. Since our colors are already in place, our firing squad detail is waiting for the signal. I would ask you all to stand and the opening prayer. <coughs> Thank you. Let us pray. Dear Lord, today we gather in your presence to honor and give thanks for our brave veterans, past and present, who served in combat or on the home front, in time of peace and in war. Thank you for putting it on their hearts, Lord, to serve this great nation, to defend and spread the freedom we hold dear, for a better world for this and generations yet unborn. We bow our heads in thankfulness for the victories you have granted us, to us and those peoples who have united with us to stamp out the evils of aggression, intolerance, and greed. Please, Father, heal those that are wounded in battle, knit together their broken bones and bodies, raise their spirit, Lord, and instill in them our everlasting gratitude for their great sacrifice. Protect the families of our veterans, dear Lord. Hold them in the palm of your hand as they wait for their soldier to return. And when they do, please provide for them Grant them prosperity and peace, tranquility and joy, as their bravery has provided for us all. Dear Lord, let the ceremonies of today deepen our reverence towards those who serve and those who have given their lives so that we can be free. Amen. Please be seated. We're honored today with the presence of two very capable buglers under the direction of Steve Govertson. We are also honored by the presence of a very nice sized choir under the direction of Brian Fantosi. I'd like to express our appreciation for these individuals as they will be departing uh, before the service is concluded. So thank you very much for your help. Also graced today by two other individuals later in the program, the Honorable Reuben Pineda will offer a presentation and a, a speech, and we're also going to make a presentation to the local food pantry. Ken Walker will have the opportunity to accept a donation later on in the program. We thank you both for your presence as well. I would ask you to stand to join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, 
with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. I'll make sure the color guard gets its signal. Julia, can you let them know their turn? Please be seated. Please be seated. The choir will now offer us some numbers. Our guest speaker this morning really needs no introduction. We all know him well. It's a privilege to call him a friend, a good neighbor, and I appreciate Mayor Ruben Pineda's presence this morning. Ruben, thank you. Good morning, everyone. Thank you to the American Legion Post 300 for inviting me to speak on behalf of the city of West Chicago and its citizens. It is an honor and a privilege to express my deepest gratitude to all of our local veterans gathered here today. And to those across the country or in remote places around the globe. Thank you for your service. I'd like to take a moment to recognize any veteran here today. Please stand or raise your hands so that we may acknowledge your sacrifice. Veterans. Again, thank you for your service. Now I'd like to ask anyone whose life has been affected by a veteran to stand or raise your hand. Any family members?
Yeah. Thank you for your support of our veterans. Thank you. Today we are free to take time out from an otherwise ordinary yet gloriously beautiful fall day in this small West Midwest town like so many others across our great nation to honor these brave benefactors of freedom. Some of us have, have crossed paths with them unknowingly at the supermarket or at the dry cleaners in a restaurant or maybe on a train. Such was the case for a train full of commuters bound for Paris this past summer. Airman First Class Spencer Stone, Army Specialist Alex Scarlatos, and their longtime friend Anthony Sadler, seated unnoticed in a train car with ordinary citizens like you. Um, seated uh, with ordinary citizens like you and me, stopped a terrorist attack by their courage, courageous action. They could have run from the danger when a heavily armed gunman boarded the train. Instead, Specialist Scar Scarlato said, let's go. As a man ran towards a future that could have easily meant instant death or maiming for them and for all the other innocent people within range. Fortunately, this story is mostly remembered not for the hor horrific tragedy that nearly happened, but for the heroism that did. Even after enduring serious stab wounds that were inflicted as he disarmed the gunman, Airman Stone administered life safety, saving first aid to a passenger that was shot. The terrorist was carrying 270 rounds of ammunition. But because of the actions of these three young Americans, the death toll aboard that train was zero. While some are calling this an amazing feat right out of Hollywood, a Hollywood action movie or HBO series, the American Legion has stated that in a, in a published speech, it is not surprising because this is the way America's military men and women ring, risk life and limb every day so that we can be free. From Bunker Hill to Baghdad, there has always been a select group of Americans willing to fight and possibly die for a greater than their self-preservation, for a cause greater than their self-preservation. And while we set aside November 11th as a special day to honor and remember our veterans, we should continuously endeavor to serve our veterans as well as they have served their nation with pride, purpose, and enthusiasm. We must honor all their families, and not just with blue and gold star banners, but with compassionate hearts. PTSD, traumatic brain injury, and life-altering war wounds not only affect the veteran, but can also take an enormous toll on the family as well. The American Legion, chartered by Congress in 1919 as a patriotic, a patriotic veterans organization, focused on service to veterans, service to members and communities. Evolved from a group of war-weary veterans of World War I into one of the most influential nonprofit groups in the United States. Membership swiftly grew to over one million and local posts sprang up across the country. Today, membership stands at over 2.4 million in 14,000 posts worldwide. Over the years, the Legion has influenced considerable social change in America, won hundreds of benefits for veterans, and produced many important programs for children and youth. We must do our part too. It is tragic that when men and women who allow us to be safe in our homes and are often without homes themselves, when they no longer wear the uniform. According to the American Legion, one in four of American homeless population is a veteran. Nine out of 10 were honorably discharged and nearly half served during the, world, the Vietnam War. Too often, today's tattered citizens of the street was yesterday's toast of to the town 
in a crisp uniform with rows of shining medals. This is hardly the thanks of a grateful nation. Companies should understand that it's smart business to hire veterans. And when members of the Guard and Reserves deploy, it is America's business to endure that they ensure that their civilian careers do not suffer. We must not forget the unique needs of female veterans. There are more than 1.8 million women in America today who have worn the uniform. Women are major contributors to our military readiness and many have given their lives in the global war on terrorism. VA must adequately treat breast and cervical cancer as well as trauma that may have resulted from domestic violence, sexual harassment, and assault. Ceremonies are important, but our gratitude must be expressed more than once a year. We must honor these men and women by living well. Whether it's a walk to raise awareness to veterans' issues, support of a fundraiser for a veteran's shelter, or a donation to helping an aging veteran make a trip to the nation's capital to see the monuments erected in their honor. We must always remember that each veteran represents an oath taken that included a willingness, a willingness to die for this country if called upon. It is what President Lincoln characterized as the last full measure of devotion. I speak of my nephew every year, Staff Sergeant Edward Thomas Pineda, West Chicago graduate, class of 2003, and will continue to mention him every year until he has completed his service to his country. He has served six tours so far, one in Iraq, five tours in Afghanistan. The proud soldier that he is, he has made the decision and sacrifice to defend this country and to continue to give us the right to live freely. Let's continue to pray that my nephew and that his generation make it home safely and they are able to join the elite group and live a long, healthy life as a proud veteran. One of their extraordinary accomplishments comes our extraordinary debt. And for those accomplishments and for their dedication, we must always be grateful. Whenever we hear a rant about the high cost of veterans' benefits, it is up to us to remind the critic about the high cost of being a veteran. It is a cost measured in blood, sweat, and sacrifice that, produced, that has produced and protected the greatest nation on earth. God bless you all for being here today. God bless our veterans. God bless the city of West Chicago. And God bless the United States of America. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mayor Pineda. To give you a little background for our <coughs> next item in our agenda. It was the design of a Navy veteran by the name of Mike Ferguson. He and other Navy veterans that had served together on the USS Forrestal had a squadron reunion recently, this earlier this year. They individually offered personal contributions. Mike suggested that these funds be directed to our local food pantry. He presented his idea at a post meeting earlier this year, and the post agreed to match whatever Mike's group, his reunion group, gathered. The fixed wing attack squadron number 65, referred to as squadron VA 65, raised $210 that day Individuals that don't know anyone in West Chicago offered generously. The Post followed up and matched its contribution of $210. And if Ken can find his way to the stand, I'd be happy to present this gift. Thank you, 
you very much. Thank you very much. I will make it. I will work twice as hard to make it work four times harder than what you gave me. And we will take it to the people of this town and this city. And thank you very much for the good region. Thank you. Thank you. Perhaps what Ken may not be aware of until he read the agenda is that there will also be a light lunch served afterward. And there will be a basket at the start of that food line for you to individually contribute on a free well basis. Those funds will also be earmarked to the food pantry. I would now call upon Julia Doggett for closing prayer. Let us pray. Greater love has no one than this, that someone lays down his life for his friend. Heavenly Father, thank you for the opportunity to gather in freedom to honor the brave soldiers who consider us friends. May the strength of God sustain us. May the power of God preserve us. May the hand of God protect us. May the way of God direct us. And may the love of God go with us. Amen. For those of you able to stay after lunch, you're invited to view the film documentary that first aired on PBS in September. It is a documentary that emphasizes the importance of our Latino community. It illustrates how one family coped with a Navy pilot being the first POW, how his family fought just for status updates. It goes on to show the disparate handling of selective service attitudes toward the Hispanic population. Uh, I would hope that some of you may stay. Uh, if you're unable to, I totally understand but please stay after lunch and view the film with us. Thank you all individually for showing this morning. This is a fantastic crowd. Give yourselves a round of applause. Thank you. <laughs>